As I drive through the snow-covered Rocky Mountains of Colorado, heading towards my best friend's hometown, the only thing that's on my mind is Cassie's story. It starts with a friend inviting me to the classic, a free-ride mountain bike event in Green River, Utah. I didn't have a mountain bike or any experience on one, but I picked one up in Denver, Colorado and did the exact drive that you're seeing right now, I-70 heading west. While at the mountain bike event, my friend's dog Motley was by their side the entire time and I kept telling my friend Rich how jealous I was of his companion. He suggested we just go to a local shelter and look for one. I told him the same thing that I've been telling other friends for months. I spend enough time in areas with homeless dogs out in the middle of nowhere, eventually my dog will find me. As the event came to an end, we packed up and made our way back towards Grand Junction, Colorado. I didn't get quite enough free ride in at the mountain bike event just because of how hectic it was, so I wanted to do some solo free ride in. So instead of going to junk town and parking at the Walmart like usual, I headed out into some wilderness outside of Grand Junction in the desert. At this point, I'd been living in the van for one to two years, and I'd spent the majority of that time in a toxic relationship with a girl and her dog in the van. We were kind of in the process of splitting up, and she was back at her parents' place, and this left me with more time to reflect and relax in the van, which was great, but the van seemed really quiet. Parked out in the middle of the desert without a soul around. I couldn't help but think of Rich and his sidekick Motley while having a couple of quiet nights camping. I was out there for a few days enjoying the freedom of being to myself without having to worry about planning around anyone else. Spending all day riding mountain bikes and all evening relaxing, cooking, and playing video games in the van. The third evening I was low on water, food, and energy. After carrying my bike up the hills and riding all day for nearly a week straight, I was about ready to head into town for a good dinner, shower, and to start preparing to head south. But since I was already out in the desert and I knew this was going to be some of my last chances to do some of the dirt pow free riding that's only found in Grand Junction and surrounding areas, I decided just to eat some canned food that I had on hand and stick it out for one more night's stinky sleep and enjoy a nice early morning ride before leaving Colorado. The morning rolled around and as I was getting ready to ride, cleaning up the van and stretching out, I just had a weird gut feeling telling me not to the entire time. Solo free ride is a risky game especially when you're working with a bad shoulder. I had dislocated it roughly 20 times by this point in my life, and the nearest riding spot was about a half a mile from the van, and that's just when you started to hike up the hill. In the days that I had been out there, I hadn't seen a single other soul, let alone somebody way back off trail into the random hills looking for some mountain biking spots. So if something goes south on a solo free ride like that, where there's no service and no one just out wandering around, odds are people aren't going to find you until it's too late. This is just a real quick reminder that I appreciate you guys watching, but I don't hardly make any money off these videos, so you can find a link down below to my Etsy store where I sell merch, and that would help support our travels if you're into something like that. I just released a few new designs, like this fly fishing hat that I'm really stoked on based off of an upcoming fly fishing in Colorado video, and the Dan's Off the Grid Colorado inspired shirt to go along with it in a similar colorway. Along with that, we have a more feminine styled shirt. Uh, powered by Mother Nature in reference to the van having solar power. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful dog. <laughs> and then of course we have the original designs which I will be pulling off of the website soon. These were our first ones that we launched. You guys showed a sick amount of support on it and thank you so much to everybody that bought merch. But as I come out with new merch designs I will be pulling these old ones off eventually including my favorite the race inspired hat. The hats and shirts are super comfortable. I do my best to keep the pricing as low as possible and make a very small amount of profit off it. If you don't think you can afford to pick up a hat or a shirt I appreciate you just watching, liking, subscribing and if you just want to go click on the link and check out the store that tells helpful as well. If you guys want to pick up some merch, if not, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys clicking the like button and YouTube stuff. My intuition told me you're sore, tired, and probably going to re-injure your shoulder out here all alone, and it's probably best I pack up and head into town. A week straight of hiking and riding all day had my body wore down. As my mom would say, don't overdo it. So I start packing up camp, 
dirty and annoyed that I didn't just head into town the night prior for a good meal and shower. And as soon as I get things wrapped up and start bouncing down the dirty road, I see this. What looks to be a mirage in the distance is a cute hound dog limping down the middle of the road. I stop the van in disbelief and hop out and kneel down to the obviously tired, malnourished, and sweet hound. She went from looking beat to ready to run miles with excitement to see me stop and get on her level. She approached with a little bit of timidness and a lot of joy when I thought she was coming to give me a kiss, tail going crazy and excitement in her eyes. She chomped me right on the nose. I stepped back in fear that maybe she's not as friendly as she looks and she took that as an opportunity to help herself into the driver's seat of the van. I look around to see if anybody's chasing after her. She has a collar on her neck but it looks like she hasn't eaten in weeks. With no one around, I tell her, scoot over, let me in, let's go find your home. Little did I know, she had already found it. After driving through the desert, finding every dirt biker and camper that I could and asking if they're missing a dog, we had no luck. I posted some photos of her onto a local lost dog Facebook group and took her into town for a much needed bath and meal. It seemed like she's never had a bath or eaten a meal without she reacted to both of them and she was dangerously skinny, looked to have not eaten for days and possibly had not been treated well for weeks, maybe months. I had been lifting her in and out of the van, up and down onto the bed as she was too weak to make this jump and this left me to assume that she was an elderly dog so I started calling her grandma. So after getting grandma cleaned up, fed, and a good handful of toys from the dollar tree, we winded down after dinner. As I crawl into bed to spend the night with a strange wild dog that I found out in the desert whose first introduction was biting me in the face, I can't help but wonder how this is going to go, but she was quick to snuggle up to me. Morning came around and I lifted grandma out of bed so she could sniff out the door while I cleaned the van up because even with low energy, the old girl's nose was busy working. And then about mid-morning, I get a Facebook message, and it reads, Hey, I think you have my dog, LOL. She informs me that she's the original breeder, and she had some puppy pictures to back the story. She claims to have given her and some other puppies for free to a guy who had dumped all of them in the desert. And while she wouldn't give me the guy's address, she did give me all the info on my newfound puppy. So I was able to know her name, age, breed, and most importantly, that a family wasn't missing their fur baby. This left me with three choices. Return her to the circle of people that left her in the desert to die. Take her to a local shelter, which mostly were plump full. Or take in a puppy I just learned to be only eight months old. So I took Cassie, my newly found puppy, to the vet to get checked up and any shots that she might need before giving her a test run on how she's going to like living in a van. I test out how she'll run beside me on a bike ride, and she passed the test. And the next test was to see how she'll do on a long drive. So we buckled up and made our way for a quick 10-hour drive south into Arizona. Cassie slept on my lap the entire drive. After months of talking about how I'm going to find my dog out in the middle of nowhere and trying trying to lure random dogs into the van asking them, are you my new dog? I feel nothing but disbelief having this beautiful hound dog sitting on my lap the entire drive down, giving me company on what otherwise would have been a lonesome 10 hour drive south. Since then, Cassie's faced her fear of water by seeing the ocean for the first time. She's been up in the mountains, splashing through the creeks and in the middle of the desert where she'd come from. She's been nothing but a joy for me and although she's cost me a good chunk of change in vet bills, I would have rather not spent my money anywhere else. So I guess the moral of the story is adopt a dog, don't shop, and careful what you ask for. Hit the subscribe button to see me and Cassie's travels as we travel across the U.S. in our van. Our next video will be going into Las Vegas and seeing what it's like to live in a van with a dog in a busy, dirty city. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Consider checking out my Etsy store down below where you can find these t-shirt designs. It helps pay for Cassie's vet bills and expensive, sensitive skin dog food and keep us on the road. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for watching. Adios.